to where we started before I went off on a, a spiel. And just close your eyes if that works for you. If it makes you feel worried to close your eyes, just soften the gaze on a point ahead of you. And first of all, let's just all synchronise our breath. So inhaling together, exhaling together, inhaling together, and exhaling together. Inhaling one, exhaling one, Aiken. Inhaling two, Exhaling two, Dway. Inhaling three. Exhaling three, Trini. Inhaling four. Exhaling four, Chitwari. Inhaling five. Exhaling five, Pancha. Inhaling six, exhaling six, shat. Inhaling seven, exhaling seven, sapta. Inhaling eight, exhaling eight, ashta. Inhaling nine, exhaling nine, nava. Inhaling ten, exhaling ten, Desha. Inhaling eleven, exhaling eleven, Ikadasha. Inhaling twelve, exhaling twelve, Dwadasha. And then just taking a normal breath in and a breath. So we'll take our spinal stretches as well here. These are a lovely warm up just to do any day of the week. Interlace the fingers. Inhale, stretch up, reach tall. Exhale, flex your spine, really round. Bring the hands behind your head. Two. Inhaling three, Trini. Exhaling four, Chitwari. Press forwards with the palms, let the head go. Inhaling five, Pancha. Hands come to the chest, extend. Exhaling, shat, round. Inhaling, Sapta, reach tall. Exhaling, Ashta, going to your right, looking down at your hand. And then inhale again here, stay with the side bend, look up. Exhale, look down. Another, inhale, stretch tall. Desha, exhale over to your left. And then again, inhale, looking up. Exhale, looking down. Inhale, Kav Desha. Exhale, draw the shell, twist and flex to the right. Inhale, re-lengthen, stay in the twist. Exhale there. Draw the shell, in, sorry, draw the shell, inhaling up. And chatur the shell, exhale to your right, as left. <laughs> inhale, re-lengthen. And then exhale, stay in the twist. And then punch the shell again, back to the centre. Extend, reach tall. And exhale, release. And then just from to all fours, step back to a plank position. And then lower your knees. Really plug the um, armpits down to the hips here and lower the chest. So elbows go straight in. Use the backs of the arms. Inhale through a little cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. And then just stay in down dog for a good three breaths. Just feeling that you breathe into the width, the breadth, the depth of your rib cage here. So you can bend the knees and really reach the chest back towards your thighs. Last breath there, inhaling, exhaling. Lovely, bend your knees deeply and walk your feet forwards to your hands and exhale, fold over your legs. Great, and then bend the knees, inhale, roll all the way up, press the palms overhead, look up, and exhale to summer's DTD. Lovely, we'll just take one on together. You can just listen, you don't have to join in here, just bring hands to heart centre. Inhaling, exhale, inhale. Um. And then we'll come 
comes is Surya Namaskar A. So A come one, inhale reaching up, Dway two, exhale fold forwards. Trini, three, inhale extend, keep the hands on the mat even if the knees are bent. Chatwari, four, step back to plank position or all fours. You can lower knees, chest, chin, or come through Chaturanga. Pancha is an inhale to up dog or cobra. Shat is back to downward facing dog. Five breaths here. One, two, three. Bend the knees if you need. And remember, if you need to come out of down dog at any point, just sit back in child's pose. Four, five. Good. Look forwards. Bend your knees. Walk your feet to your hands. And exhale, as shall fold. Another nine, inhale, rise up. Exhale to some CT. Same thing again, A, come inhale. Dway, exhale. Press the hands into the ground, tuck the head in. Trini, extend the upper back as you breathe in. Breathe out, four, step back and lower down. Knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, shat, downward facing dog. Again, five breaths here. One. Two, spread your fingers. Three, see if you can bend the elbows slightly and then wrap the upper arms forwards and then reach the chest back as you straighten the arms. Five. Good. Look forwards. Inhale. Suck to walk the feet to the hands. Ash out. Exhale. Fold. Let the head relax. Neck relax. Another nine. Inhale. Rise up. Look up. Look to your thumbs. Stretch tall. Exhale. Summer CT. Lovely. One more like that. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Fold. Press the hands in front of your feet. Tuck the forehead in. Trini. Inhale. Extend. If you want, you can jump back here. Transfer the weight forwards. Send the hips up and back as you lower down. Inhale, pancha. Exhale, shut. Downward facing. Five breaths. One. Two. Three. Four. Keep reaching chest to thighs. Five. Again, look forwards. Inhale, suck to walk or jump. Ash out, exhale, fold. Bend the knees, another nine. Inhale, reaching up. Exhale, some CT. Surya Namaskar B. So this time we come through a low chair seat here. A can then reach up. Dway, exhale, fold. Press the hands into the ground. Trini, inhale, extend heart. Step or jump back to plank. And lower down. Inhale, upward facing or cobra pancha. Shat, exhale, downward facing. Turn the left foot out a little bit. Try to keep the left heel grounded. Squeeze that right knee to your chest. So really using your belly here and plant the right foot between your hands. So we'll slow this down a bit for this first one. Really align the feet well. Ground the back heel as much as the front one. And then rise up to this Virabhadrasana one shape. Warrior one shape, adjust the feet if you need. And then look up. So extra breaths here for this round. Then we're going to bring the hands all the way back down. Again, stepping back through plank, or knees, chest, chin, and lowering down. The back bend is on the inhale, down dog is on the exhale. And then we step the right foot out a little bit to the side. Left foot really squeeze that knee to your chest and then plant it forwards. Rise up on the inhale, reach tall. Good, adjusting the feet if you need. Just find that train track shape with the feet. And then exhale, press it back. So as you step back, really squeeze the legs as much as the belly as you lower down. And then pull it through into upward facing or cobra. Exhale, downward facing. Again, five breaths here. One, two, three, rest 
in child's if you need, great, four, and five. Again, look forward, bend the knees, walk or jump to your hands. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, rise up, press the palms, look up. Exhale, some of the CTE. Good. But just catch your breath there. So we're going to go through this one at a little bit of a quicker pace now. If you feel tired, just rest. And a really good point to rest, actually, is when we come through the first warrior one, you could just step back to downward facing dog there and miss out the whole other vinyasa in between. That's fine. You can just still count the breath. So you still get the same um, breath count there. Okay, let's try again. A, come inhale. Way, exhale, press the hands down. Inhale, extend halfway. Exhale, step or jump back. And lower down. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Turn your left foot out, step the foot forwards between your hands and rise up. Really reach and lift the heart centre. Exhale, stepping back and lowering down. Another, inhale. Desha, 10, exhale. The card the shell, turning the right foot out, left foot comes forwards for warrior one. Use the whole in breath, so take a bit of time if you need. And the shell, stepping all the way back down. Lowering towards the mat. Inhale, Trayoda de shell through the back bend. Exhale, Chatur de shell, five breaths. So you can catch up here, one. Staying in down dog, two, three, four, and five. Lovely. And then Pancha de Shah, step forwards to the top of your mat. Show de Shah, exhale, fold in front of your legs. Sat de Shah, come back through that deep bend of the legs. Reach tall. Exhale, so let's Good. We're just going to do one more of those. A, come inhale, reaching out. We are going to get warm. Dway, exhale, fold. Press the hands down, head in. Inhale, tree knee, heart lifts. Tip the weight forward, see if you want to jump up and back as you lower. Inhale, open through, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Turn the left foot out. Right foot comes between the hands, rise up, use the whole in breath, this is Sukta. Ash down all the way back down. Knees, chest, chin if you need. Cobra or upward facing is Nava. Desha, downward facing, exhale. Ikhadasha, left foot comes forward, rising up. Dwadasha, stepping back and lowering down. Strong legs, strong belly. Inhale, opening, upward facing. Exhale, Chaturdasha, downward facing. Again, five breaths here. One. Two. See if you can have a little wrap of the low ribs here. Three, little scoop up of the low belly. Four. <coughs> Five. Good. Look forward. Punch of the shell. Walk or jump. Shoulder shell. Exhale. Fold. Suck to the shell. Sit low in the legs. Inhale. Reach to look to your thumbs. Exhale. Sound of CTD. Well done. So we're going to jump the feet hip distance apart here. Bend the knees a little bit so you can reach down and take your peace fingers inside your big toes. That's all egg from one. Inhaling. And then do a exhale fold. So the knees can absolutely stay bent. Shoulders can just be relaxed, elbows go back. And then if it feels good, from that long spine, that's what we want to go for here, the long spine, you just start to really lift the pelvis up to straighten the legs. It's almost like you suck up from the ground, from that ground in the feet to straighten the legs. One more breath there, inhale. Exhale, good. Release your toes. Just have a little bend in the knees and extend halfway. Slide the hands all the way under your feet. So 
so that your toes are coming right up towards your wrist crease. And then again on the exhale, you can bend the elbows, tip the weight forwards, be brave about that. Your lower belly will draw in to support your balance a bit there. And fold. Elbows can go out to the side. Relax the neck. Four. And five. Okay, so that's Padahasana, hand to foot. Inhale, extend halfway there. Release the hands, bend the knees. And then really press the ground away, roll up vertebrae over vertebrae. And step back to Samasthiti. So I'm going to mirror you here. You're going to step out with your right foot to a parallel stance. And then <clears throat> turn your right leg out from right from the very top of the thigh, ready for Trikonasana. So extend the arms long. Send the left hip away, really reach the ribs forwards to come into your Trikonasana here. So this might be deep enough um, with the hand down the legs so that you can keep the chest open. If you normally practice taking the big toe, go ahead and take the big toe, but have some contact either with your leg or your foot. Draw the low ribs in and then extend from tail to crown. You can look up or down. Four. Five. Good. Bend your knee. Trini. Inhale, come up. Chitwari. All on the exhale. We change sides, but don't rush. You can take extra breaths here. Taking big toe or hand to shin. And then really roll it open. Extend the straight line from fingertip to fingertip. So you want to avoid this kind of shape with the body rolling forwards. Also want to avoid the arm just flinging back. So try to feel that centre line. And five. Good. Look down for balance. Bend the knee. Pancha. Inhale, come up. Exhale, just bring your hands to your waist and parallel your feet. There's a twisted one here, a twisted triangle, but I'm going to miss that today. <laughs> and we'll step to the top of the mat. It's a bit complicated. I'd like to teach it to you all properly another time. So let's step out with the right foot. Nice big distance between the feet. And then again, the right hip's going to spiral out. Maybe walk the left toes away. So exhaling into that right leg, almost as if you were going to come into a warrior two shape, if you're familiar with that. And then either forearm can come to thigh as you extend your left arm, or if you've got a block or a cushion handy, you can use that to press if you can't quite reach the floor, or your fingertips, or your palm. Just keeping your breath moving, especially as I give these detailed instructions. Looking towards the middle finger. Four. And five. Good. Looking down again for balance. Trini, inhale. Exhale there. Changing sides. Rotating from the top of the left leg. Bend nice and deep. Find that alignment of the knee over the centre of the foot. Reach the body forwards, either forearm to thigh. Extending the right arm overhead or fingertips or palm. What we want to do though is to keep driving the knee back towards the armpit. So you've got that deep hip opening or that rolling of the thigh in the hip socket externally. Four, get your middle finger. Five, good, look down for balance, bend the knee again. Inhale, drive it up. Exhale, parallel the feet. And then again, turn to the right. You're gonna go to your right, I'm just gonna turn this way so you can see for the first side, so I'm not mirroring you now. Lower your left knee down, and really get the left ribs so you can wrap them outside your right knee. Either come into this prayer shape here, if you know the full version with the hand outside the foot and the back foot down, you can take that. But this is a really good place to be in this prayer twist. You might want to come to a high lunge. Wherever you are, the length from tail to crown. That's at least five, but we'll just take one breath together. Inhale. Exhale, good. See if you can drive up through the legs to come back through the centre. Parallel the feet and then we'll go to the left side. So lowering your knee. And actually it's kind of helpful, I know I'm facing my back to you, but to see how the pelvis is going to stay anchored, the wrap comes from the rib cage first. Keep this front leg really strong and there's a bit of a curl of the spine to get the bind and then you can re-lengthen out of it. Maybe you're coming to here. Maybe 
maybe you want to come to the full variation. Last breath, inhale, exhale, get it driving up through the legs on the inhale, and exhale, stepping back to Sam's DTE. Lovely. So now we have four forward folds, the Prasamita by Dr. Masalas. <laughs> Egg and one, we step out with the right foot again, and about a leg's length between your feet. Inhale here. And the way, exhale, fold, press the hands in line with your feet. Trini, a little halfway lift. And then exhale, again, better to bend the knees here and send the crown of the head down. Then from here, if you can, you drive up from the ground to straighten the legs. But that buoyancy in the knees is really important here. Again, we're releasing the spine more than thinking about just the hamstrings or the legs here. Send the crown of the head to the earth. Relax your neck. Five, good. Inhale, Chatwari. Exhale, hands to waist. Bend the knees. Unfurling puncher. Exhale there, good. Akam, inhale, arms wide. Dway, exhale, hands to waist. Little inhale to lengthen. And then truly exhale. Forward. Keeping your hands on your waist. Got my little uh, fairy goblins in the background, crashing around. And then see if you can send the crown of the head down towards the centre of the mat again, even though we haven't got the little bit of purchase for the arms this time. Four. Five, good, bend the knees, inhale, roll up, vertebrae for vertebrae, crown of the head up last. Exhale there, good, Ekam inhale again. Dway, exhale, interlace your fingers behind your back. So the grip is this way. I'm going to turn this way so you can see. Draw the shoulders down, reach the upper arms back, and truly fold. And then you can kind of elevate your arms a little bit here to allow the hands to release further over. Bend the elbows a little bit, lift the shoulders, tip the weight forwards, be brave here. Good. Four. Five, lovely, bend the knees to Twari, inhale, coming all the way up, exhale there. And then again, echo, inhale, the arms to the side, do it, exhale, hands to waist, little inhale, and truly exhale, fold, take your peace fingers inside your big toes again. So this is D, A, B, C, D, little half, inhale, and then as you exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, and press the crown of the head towards the mat. So it doesn't matter if the head doesn't go down. Keep buoyancy in the legs to help you get the tail going up. Good. Two more breaths there. Maybe finding a little bit more depth as this is the fourth repetition. And five. Good. Bend the knees. Inhale. Roll all the way up. Hands to waist. Spin the arms. And step back to some DTV. Good. If you feel a bit head rushy, just let that pass. And then we have um, a funny reverse pyramid. So, again, the best way if I show you standing with my back to you, extend your arms, internally rotate as much as you can, bring the arms back, and then see if you can wriggle them into that reverse prayer shape. And then from the tip, top of your mat, stepping back with the right foot again, a slightly shorter than the leg stance. And then again, keep your hips level. So if you're too much on a tightrope, you're going to lose your balance. Sorry, keep your feet level with your hips. So even though my heels are in line, I've still got that sense that my feet are hip width. Inhale, extend. And then exhale, fold towards the right leg. And again, relax your neck. Bend the knee if you need. And keep thinking about rolling the shoulders down a little bit as you press the palms together. Let the head go. One more breath, inhaling, exhaling, bend your right knee, drive the ground away as you inhale up, exhale, Trini to change sides, and Chatwari to fold. Let the head go, and again five breaths here, keeping as much weight in the back foot as the front. Notice if you can have a sense of plugging. 
bringing the left thigh back into the left hip and just feel that little bit of connection in your low belly as you do that. Four. Five. You bend the knee, inhale, puncher coming all the way up. Exhale, summer CTV. Five. So, balancing now. Uttita Hasta Palangasasana. So, you can either take um, hand to knee and then you'll fold here, or you can take hand to big toe. So, setting up, this is Akum. One. And away, exhale, fold. Either over the bent or straight leg, it's fine. Either is good. Keep pulling up through the standing leg, squeeze your glutes. Three, four, five. Inhale, re lengthen, trini. And Chaturanga, bring the leg to the side. If you feel balanced, turn your head to the opposite direction. If you've got the knee, you're still here. This is good. Pull the shoulders down the back wherever you are. Four, Five, good, shat to center. Sorry, puncher. Shat, fold, exhale. Suck to release, hands to waist, pull up on that quad. I know it feels burning. Let's do it anyway. Use the breath to be calm. Four, five, exhale, lower down, well done. Great strengthener for your psoas and your balance there to use the psoas to stabilize. That's why we do it. It makes it feel less horrible when you think about it like that. <laughs> Okay, so bringing the left leg up, another, sorry, Asha, another fold, one, two, three, four, five, Desha, inhale, the Kardasha out to the side, turn the gaze if you wish, one, two, three, four, keep pulling up on both quads, squeeze your bum, inhale back to the centre, Exhale, one, two, straight leg, three, shoulders down the back, stand up tall, try not to lean back, well done, lovely. And then come back to centre. So the next one is a half lotus and a standing balance. So you'll know very quickly which is going to work for you. You're either coming here and clicking the bind and taking a forward fold. If you can't take the lotus and the bind, come to a wall and sit back in a figure four shape. So you've got this shape with the legs and then you're going to sit back and push the wall away so that you get that hip opening around the right hip and that's going to help you to, to find the same action. All right, <clears throat> so taking the bind, take him way forward. If you've got the figure four shape, just stay there and breathe. Send the hips back. Three. Inhale. Four. Exhale. Inhale. Five. Exhale there. Get trini. Inhale. Look forwards. Exhale there. Chatwari. Inhale. Come all the way up to stand. And punch your exhale. Release your leg. Changing sides to the figure four if you're going there. Or, shat taking the left leg into half lotus. Go underneath the lotus, always underneath, so we don't yank at the knee. Get the spiral from your hip. Taking the bind. And sutta, exhale, fold. One. If you're in the figure four, keep sending the tail back and down so that you keep the ankle at 90 and the knee at 90. Four, five, good. Asha, inhale, exhale there. Another, inhale up to stand. Really squeeze the glutes on that standing leg. And release the sun's CT. Good, well done. So we're going to revisit chair and the warriors now. So A, come inhale, look up, dway, exhale, press the hands down, forehead to shin, relax your neck. Trini, inhale. Maybe see if you can be brave. Tip the weight forwards into your hands. Go high on the tippy toes to send the hips up. And find your plank. Knees, chest, chin, chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lovely. So, Sutta, we're going to inhale, jumping the feet to the hands. And 
and then stay low, the legs rise up. Utkatasana, five breaths here. So really squeezing the legs. You can let your tail go back here. I know some people say tuck the tail, but it's a bit of a back bend actually. And then really send the legs down as you reach the heart up. Four, five, good. Exhale, press the hands down to the ground. If you want, you can try a little bunny hop here. You don't have to. You can just step back to plank. Or you can tip the weight forwards. Tip the weight, see if you can send the hips up and back. That wasn't very good either. <laughs> Inhale, opening up. Exhale, downward facing. Turn the left foot out. And then again, really squeeze the right knee to the chest. See if you can keep the left foot grounded to bring the right foot between the hands. Rise up, Virabhadrasana, one. Look into your thumbs, one. Two, go nice and deep in that right leg, really strong left leg. Three, four, five. See if you can keep the arms where they are. And as shall go to the left side, so just pivoting the feet around. Good, two, reach up. Three, four, five. Now that you're open to warrior two on the left side, so walking the back foot away, and then the left knee is in line with the, the middle of your left foot again, and gaze over the middle finger, one, really soft from the shoulders but really strong arms reaching long, good, four, five, good, press the ground away to come up, and Desha changing sides, so spiralling the right foot out this time, so any time really in this uh, series we go right, oh, sorry, left first, right second, two, three, gaze over the middle finger, four, strong legs, five, exhale, bring the arms down, so again if you want, there's a little kick up here, which can be quite fun, tip the weight forwards, you can come into almost like a little half stag shaped handstand, and then step it back to your plank, inhaling up, just fling yourself around. <laughs> Exhale to downward facing dog. Safely, of course, <laughs> with cushions around you. And then look forwards. This time we're going to jump through to sit. So let's practice that little jump through. You're going to walk the feet in. Don't lift your hands up. Bend your legs, cross your feet. Don't lift your hands. And then send the feet through. <sighs> Good. Dandasana. So we get to sit down. <laughs> it's a very connected sit down. So press the hands down, wrap the inner legs in, and then draw the armpits to the hips. Pull up with Mula Banda, so as if you're stopping going to the loo, and a little bit Ujjana Banda, so as if you're trying to scoop the pelvis up towards the ribs a little bit. And then Jana Lama, the throat. A little bit of length through the back of the neck to draw a little seal there. And then feel that sense that as you press down into the ground, you kind of charge your body up. Lovely. Keep that same connection in the legs. You can bend them, absolutely bend them if you need, to tip the pelvis forwards, tail back. Take hold of the big toes, Paschimottanasana. So this would be Ashtal to inhale and prepare. Another exhale, fold, head towards the shins. So that could also look like this. If you're feeling really rounded in your spine, that's fine. Just keep a little softness across the collarbones, bend the knees, and try and feel that the stretch is even across the whole back line of the body. Let the head go. And we're going to inhale, lengthen, exhale there. A little strength building here is to press the hands near your knees. Eventually you want to try and find that same pat, that same dandasana feeling, all the bandas being switched on to lift up. To start with you can lift your bottom back, just a mini little lift, let's try. So it's counterintuitive but the hands have to come really far forwards somewhere between your knees and your hips but not by your hips so that you can curl the belly in 
and suck everything up. Yeah, that's it. And then we forward fold again. Hands can get over the top of the feet this time, as if you're trying to pull the toes back. Inhale, exhale, fold. Again, five breaths here. One. Two. Three, allowing your awareness just to come really quietly, deeply within here. Four. And five. Good, lovely. Again, inhale, lengthen up. Press the hands by your hips. Suck everything up as you exhale, lift up and lower. Good. Last one here, you can bind the hands around the feet if they'll go. You can repeat either of the last two. There's your feet. <laughs> Exhale, fold. One, two, three. Keeping that little sense of the inner legs rolling together. Shoulders drawing away from the ears a little bit. Just a little softness there. And five. Good. Inhale, lengthening up. Exhale there. Now this time, let's hug the knees in. So squeeze into a little ball. And then press the hands in front of your hips. Again, it's counterintuitive. And then it's like a little pendulum swing to poke the feet back through and see if you can find that plank shape or just to even lift the bottom a narrow inch and roll it forwards and then step it back. And then lower knees, twist chin or chaturanga. Upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So little half vinyasas here. Again, look towards your hands, bend your knees, see if you can jump to your hands, stay in that tight ball, and flip the legs through to lower down. Good. <laughs> Purple tanasana. So bring the hands back about, I don't know, six inches away from your bottom. Absolutely fine to do the tabletop variation here, lifting the hips. Or we're going to zip the legs together, a little bend in the knees as you roll forwards, bringing the big toes down. Five breaths. One, two, can't see you, I trust you're all lifting up. Three, squeeze the inner legs together, lift the pit of the navel towards the heart to lift up even more. And five, well done. <laughs> Try talking when you're doing that, it's quite fun. <laughs> Give the wrists a roll if you need. This time again, we'll just do that little practice picking up. Maybe just see if you can walk your feet through, all the way back to plank, and take your flow. And exhale to the outward facing dog. Again, look forward, see if you can take that little jump through, squeeze into a ball, and send the legs through. Good. Um, <coughs> Ardha Vada Padma Paschimottanasana. So a seated variation of that half lotus. This is a really good place to work on lotus. Just relax your left leg, go under your right leg, and roll the foot towards your groin. So if it feels really difficult to do that, bring yourself to a figure four shape here, and start to lean forward so that you feel the stretch into that, that side, on the right side, that outer hip. If it feels like there's a bit more space, you can come to here. If you know where you're going with this one and you're comfortable, you're taking the bind, exhale, fold. Five breaths. Two, if we're in this prep shape, stay here. Really bring the chest to the thighs, good. So we want to get a parallel shin in this figure four shape and flex the foot. So everything's at 90 again. I can just about see you all. <laughs> And release it. Good. Extend your legs straight. There's a vinyasa there, but we're going to miss out vinyasas between sides. So it's too exhausting to start with. And actually, it's too exhausting ongoing <laughs> to do them all sometimes. So either bringing yourself into half lotus on the left side, taking the bind and the fold, or coming to that figure four shape again. Maybe here, maybe here. Wherever you are, you're trying to keep the chest broad. Lift up and out with your pelvic floor because that's really important to stabilize obviously the center of the body so we can get the spiral of the thigh and the hip socket and then we 
really want to keep everything safe, especially for the knee. So as we start to come into these um, places where the hip muscles or the hip external rotators are tight, we don't want the force to go into the knee, we want to keep it here. If I keep talking, you won't notice that your hip's screaming at you. <laughs> and five, good release. Extend the legs to straight. We'll just do a little pick up here. So squeeze into a ball, press the hands down, really suck up as if you really, really need the loo and you can't go. Hold it in, hold it in, and then release. Good. So the next one, we take the knee in the ankle in the other direction and take it laterally, medially. Um, so bring your right leg in. I'm doing left just so you can see this first side. Really fan your toes out to the side and roll the inner leg in. The left leg here is so nice and active. So flex the foot as if you are standing on it. I had breakfast. It's a really bad idea to have breakfast before you practice, isn't it? <laughs> Got hiccups now. And then see if you can draw the left leg back into the hip and really press that top of the right foot down. And then from here, again, send the tail back to try and come towards a forward fold. So for many of us, our hips feel all wonky. This foot doesn't want to bend, in which case, sit yourself up on some cushions or books, um, or just press away with your left hand to ground that hip. Some of you know what you're doing, you go ahead and do it, it's fine. Good, and then you're, you're trying to bring yourself into the forward fold in the mind eventually. Good. And then coming up. So there's a fancy pick up and a jump back from there. If you're working on that, do it. The way to do that again is to lean forwards, squeeze in and drag it back. And then you can take your vinyasa and come through. If we're missing the vinyasa, which is definitely a good choice as well, we're going to half bend the left leg and start to set up for that left side. So don't rush, I want to give you all you know, time to find this and find which variation works for you. So you can sit up on cushions. I mean a book is ideal and if one hip is slightly raised, if you put a, a thin book under the, the extended leg, that, that sit bone, that's going to help to, to ground your hips more evenly. If you're nearly there, just press away with the right hand to help ground that left hip. And then if you're coming into the fold, come into the fold. Good. Three. It's probably more like 23, four. It's good to give these a bit of time though, and to let your ankles get used to that plantar flexion as well for many of us. Five, good. Either cross your legs, curl into a ball and jump it back, or if you want to try and lean forward, you press off the top of the bent leg to come back. And then take knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, cobra, or upward facing dog as you breathe in, downward facing dog as you breathe out. And then again, see if you can try that little jump through. So you can tiptoe in, curve into a ball, and just spin the feet through. Good. <laughs> so we're going to miss out a couple of these next uh, postures for today. Janu Shishasana, which means head to knee. There's actually three variations, but we're just going to do A today. So you're going to bend your right foot in, but keep the pelvis level. Good. So again, if you've got a cushion or a book that you've been using, you can press the right knee down into it if it's not quite towards the floor. And then inhale, prepare. And Ashdown is exhale, fold. Five breaths here. So this is a really nice place to think about lengthening the sides of the waist up and out of the pelvis. So you're scooping the bandas here, Mula and Udiana, to lift yourself up and over. Lengthening through the back line of the body. Broaden the collarbones. And then just relax the neck. Last breath here. Five. Inhaling. Exhaling. Good. Inhale. Lengthen up. Another. Exhale there. Cross the legs. Desha is a pick up. We're going to miss out the whole vinyasa, but see if you can do the lift up. And lower down. Lovely. Chaturanga Shah preparing your left side. So that's 14. And Panchata Shah 15 fold. And then five breaths here. So there's a lot of 
numbers um, in Sanskrit that I'm chucking at you. If we never say them, they never become familiar. So although they can feel really unfamiliar to start with, eventually it, it's really helpful pattern. Four, five. Lovely. Shoulder sharp, inhale, that's 16. Exhale there. 17, we'll pick it up, we'll do the full vinyasa. You absolutely don't have to, you can sit and count. So, so subject shut up, ashtadasha back, and lower down. Akona vimshti, 19. Vimshti, 20. Exhaling there. And then sata, seven. Jumping through. Seven is usually coming forwards, whether you're standing or sitting. And then we're going to take a twist here. So we're going to miss Jenny B and C for today. We're going to bring, actually I'll do the left side first so you can see me, but you guys go right first. You've got a little uh, gap between your foot and your thigh. So your heel is about in line with your sit bone. And then it's half sitting, half standing, this posture. The idea is that from these, we keep our ability to be able to move like this. So this hip can be off the ground, that's fine. And you're going to, Use your left hand to support you out to the side. Reach as far forward as you can. So something coffee here. <laughs> and then internally rotate your arm. Wrap around to bind. And then take a hold of your left wrist or fingers behind you. So everything's squeezing in. If you can't reach your fingers, don't worry. Just do the best shape you can for today. And then exhale, fold. So again, that little lift of the band is here is going to help to roll length forward through the spine. Good. Keep squeezing your inner right leg towards your right rib cage, right side of your rib cage. So the, the adductors are working there, everything's working. Good. Inhale, lengthen up, number. Exhale there. If you want, you can try. Um, a little pick up here. So you're going to press the hands next in line with your right foot. Squeeze in. See if you can pick yourself up there. Maybe send that foot back and then pick yourself back down again. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't really have to do that. <laughs> Nearly time for coffee. <laughs> Left leg comes in. Heel in line with the bottom. Again, squeeze it nice and tight. Imagine that it's half sitting. I can't do it on this side. Half standing. <laughs> And then we're going to use this right hand as a support to reach the left arm inside as far as you can and back to bind. Take time with this. Squeeze the inner left leg against the left side ribs and then exhale to fold. Five breaths. So again, what we're doing here is working, in, uh, working, working into our uh, hip mobility so encouraging the ability to squat, and bend, and mobilize through the shoulders. And then inhale, lengthening up. Press the hands down. Again, this time if you want to, you can try and pick it up and jump it all the way back. I can't do it very well like that. <laughs> and then lower down. Inhale, opening up. Exhale, downward facing. And we always have one side that's better. So I can do that jump through on the other side and avoid it on that side. <laughs> and then again, looking forward, satta, jump it through, stand asana position. Great. So that last posture, there's a variation with a half lotus, so we're going to skip that for today. We'll come to C, Marichi Asana C. So these are all poses of, poses of the sages, the sage Marichi. Um, I guess because I did a lot of sitting in forests, and talking to people. So again, there's that half sitting, half standing. So the same shape with your feet. And then bring your right hand behind you to support a little bit as you flex and curl deeply into a twist. So this is a really good shape for the twist. It might be more than enough for you. If you can, you're going to spiral that left arm back around a little lasso and see if you can take hold of the fingers or the wrist on that side. But don't stress about the bind at all. Again, it's really not good after porridge. <laughs> and then lengthen the crown of the head. So there's a feeling that the, the right hip isn't quite grounded. 
but there's length through the upper back. Lovely. Slowly release the bind, unwind it. You might want to take a little spiral to your left. And again, we'll just take a little pick up there. So cross the legs in, press down, squeeze it up, and lower. And extend, good. And then left side. So again, that same little position as if you could stand up from there. Left fingertips behind you, really wrap the rib cage around. This can be a really good place to be. Don't forget about your right leg, keep it a little bit active. If you want to take the bind, lasso in the arm around. And you can let the left hip be off the ground, absolutely. It's an asymmetric pose for the pelvis. And then the upper back is extending up. My teacher says it's like you blossom above the crown of the head. So if it feels a bit tight and horrible, just imagine some lovely blossom above your head. <laughs> All is fine then. Good, last breath, inhale, exhale. Good, unwind, take a little twist to the left. And then again, there's a, another variation with the half lotus, but we'll skip that one today. And we'll take a little vinyasa, so pick it up, jump it back. You can just come to all fours and do cat cow if you like here, to just take your spine to extension and flexion after the twists. This is a little neutraliser. Then from here, we're gonna jump straight into Navasana boat pose. Or you can jump to sit and then come into it if you can. So you can send the legs straight through and find boat. So if you wish, this is a good option. You need the toes down for now to get the chest lifted, that's also fine, just to build that strength gradually. Or well, again, I'm gonna talk a lot so you don't notice how <laughs> any discomfort is there. And then curl in. Good, again, if you wish, a little pick up. Absolutely, you can use your feet when you're learning, squeeze it up and lower. Good. There's four repetitions more of this. Just, just do it, we breathe through it. One, two, so we're really strengthening the psoas here. Lift up that main flexor from the trunk to the hip. Five, curl in, press the hands down, pick it up, lower it down. Again, one, two, you can do it. Three, use your hands for support if you need, keep the chest lifted. Curl in, press down, pick it up. Good, only two more, you can do it. One, two, happy thoughts, three, <laughs> four, Five, curl in, press hands down, lift it up, last one, one, two, use your breath, it's going to get hot here, don't worry about it, good, well done, curl in, pick it up, step or roll it forward, I think it's really nice to take up double cobra here, to stretch out the psoas in the trunk, open the body long, inhale, exhale, Downward facing dog. Well done. So that's half primary. Slightly modified, but we've done it. We're just going to jump to a squat here. So jump to your hands if you can and come to Malasana. This isn't strictly in the sequence, but the next posture that comes after boat pose is um, an arm balance that comes sort of from a squat, Bhuti Padasana, which some of you will know. So it's quite nice to have a little squat here, again, as a, a prep for the hips. If squatting is really hard, again, you can just roll your mat and pop that under your heels or use books or cushions. So next time you'll know a little bit more maybe what props might be helpful for you. And I think, you know, good old gym style hip opener here, a little roll around side to side, like a Cossack dancer is quite nice. Um, and then come back to here. And have a good squat, bring the hands back to heart centre and just breathe here for a moment. Really think about a little lift of pelvic floor and how even though you're sinking down, you're pressing into the feet to rise up. And then we're just going to play a little bit again with that strength that we'll need for the next posture in the sequence here. If you've got crow in your practice, you're very welcome to play around with crow. Um, otherwise, we're going to roll forwards, take the balance um, onto the balls of the feet and really squeeze the knees into the upper arms. So you're really using your leg strength there to keep yourself in position. 
and then you press the hands down and then just play with shifting the weight forwards and back here. So this is a helpful uh, little position to learn to just get confident about how much your legs need to work to hold you in arm balances. It's not just about strength, it's finding the technique through the core. So then to tip to crow, we do the same. We just shift the weight completely and squeeze the legs up and then come back down. So it's really calm, controlled, slow tip and squeeze. The hamstrings work to bring the heels to the bottom and to lower yourself back. Give your wrists a little roll. Um, and it really, if you can approach things with that, okay, just going to tip and squeeze, <laughs> much less stressful. Um, what we're going to do now is just send the hips high, keeping them slightly less than mat width. And just have a, a little wriggle of the shoulders here to bring the hands behind your feet. So this is a prep for Bhuji Padasan here. And see if you can lift your right heel up, get hold of the ankle, snuggle the shoulder under, put your hand under your foot. See if you can do that. And then take it out and then do the same on the other side. Put your hand under your foot and see if you can do that. And then if you can, press the palms behind your heels Squeeze the inner legs against your arms and just sit back. And again, maybe you can bring the legs up and tip it back and forwards. Good. And then from here, often what wants to happen is plop. And we'll just let ourselves plop. <laughs> Great. So we're skipping out the whole arm balance hip opener section because it's really, really difficult. Well, not just because of that, but actually we've done half primary. It's enough. We're going to open the soles of the feet and skip to Baddha here. So lengthening the heart forwards and exhale, just release the chest forwards. So again, this isn't strictly in the sequence order, but we have just worked the inner legs really hard. So we'll just release them and counter and stretch here. And if the chin wants to come down, bring it down. If it doesn't, be here, keep reaching the tail down as you lengthen the heart forwards. <clears throat> and then inhale up, exhale there. Now tip the pelvis back, so the tail coming under towards your nose. And round in, Baddha Konasana B. And just allowing your attention to quieten down and come a little inwards. Three more breaths there. And then slowly roll yourself up to sit. Squeeze the legs in and extend yourself to Dandasana. So find that strongly grounded position with the bandas being active. And then from there, slowly lie down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Good. And then bring the soles of the feet to the mat. So we're going to take bridge and um, possibly over Dhanurasana or wheel. Um, if you're doing bridge, you're going to do two longer holds and repetitions of bridge. If you're doing wheel, you can come straight to wheel if you're ready for it, if you're doing the prep for that. Otherwise, we'll all be in the bridge prep. So feet are hip distance, just check you can tickle your heels with your fingertips. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, start to squeeze up on the pelvic floor, and then squeeze the low belly to roll the spine vertebrae by vertebrae, legs and glutes, bottom muscles will start to work, lift the hips, and then really snuggle the shoulders down and together to interlace the fingers here, press the upper arms into the mat, so you really on the upper arms and the shoulders, the neck and the head should feel quite free. Lift the chin away from the chest. And then see if you can lift the back of the heart to the side here. So it will feel as though the chest comes towards the chin. But you're definitely not bringing chin to chest. <laughs> Keep that space and length in the neck. Free breathing. And then release the hands, release the arms, keep the feet really firmly planted as you roll the spine back down to the mat and give the knees a hug. And then you can repeat that if you want to come to try it 
Dhanurasana. Bring the arms up to uh, at shoulder height, sorry, and then plug the shoulders down your back. Bring the fingertips back towards your shoulders, elbows stay pointing straight up. Inhale again, Nava, and then press up. There. Two. Keep reaching the chest towards the wall behind you. Four. Five. Chin to chest. Roll it down. Keep the feet firmly planted. Squeeze the legs. And then give the knees a little hug to the chest at the bottom. You can repeat one more wheel if you'd like and one more bridge if you'd like. If you're feeling like you want to just take some loose rolling bridges here. Rolling the hips up and down with the arms, you're welcome to do so. If you want to take one more over down Arasana, prepare. Just going to have a little check of what you're doing. And then on the inhale coming up, good. Drive through the legs, lift the hips. And if you're taking the rolling bridges, just really allowing the breath to guide the movement there. Noticing any areas of stiffness in the spine. Great. And then when you're done, just give the knees a little hug into the chest again. Lovely. There is another vinyasa here, which you're welcome to take. Or we're just going to come back up to seated for a moment and revisit our forward fold. So again, countering the back bend with taking the spine in the other direction. So you can take whichever bind works for you, hands around the feet, hands to big toe. And we're going to take 10 breaths there. So really rolling the inner line of the legs together. One. So if it feels really tight, do bend the legs, bring them in and allow yourself to catch hold of maybe the ankles or the shins and just bring yourself into that sense of draw that little loop so that you can feel that you draw the breath up the whole back line of the body and all the way back over so you've got this lovely spiral of breath working over the body there five more breaths Last inhale, exhale, and then slowly rolling up. Again, we're going to roll down all the way to the mat to, to prepare for inversions. So, we're going to sketch out the Ashtanga shoulder stand sequence, um, and then there's option for headstand or dolphin afterwards. If you don't feel like you want to do any of that today, you can come to the wall, put legs up the wall. Um, or if you've got a sofa, like we did on um, Friday's class, you can just hook your legs on the sofa. Um, or just spend the whole time with the legs up the wall. They're all really good options. If you want to take a shoulder stand, we're going to come all the way to laying down, nice and slow. And then Ashtra, we come straight into it. You can bend your legs if you need. But see if you can come up with straight legs. Again, roll the shoulders together and down, chin away from the chest. If you can feel any pressure on your cervical spine, please come out of it. All we need to do in that case is to roll the top of your mat a bit or put a blanket there to give your neck space. I'll show you how to do that really simply. I'll do it from the other end of my mat so you can see. You'll roll your mat in, maybe so two or three rolls depending on how thick your mat is. Um, <laughs> and your head will be off the mat. So the top of your shoulders are just in line with the top of the mat here. I'm going to have cement on my hair now. Concrete. Um, <laughs> and then again, when, when you rock up, you'll feel that you've just got that little bit more space. And that's a really nice way to practice. In fact, I quite often practice it like this anyway. Okay. So, coming up into that variation, if you wish now. If you've already been in shoulder stand for a few breaths and you know where you're going, you're coming into Halasana. 
If you're not sure about these, just take it easy. If you've had a go at shoulder stand, just come down now and maybe take legs up against the wall if you're struggling, because I can't, I can't help you enough. I want to make sure that your neck is safe. It's, an, it's really no big deal, and legs up the wall is, is going to give you as many benefits. So to do that, you're going to come into the wall and just send the legs up and rest there. I can't put my feet on the wall because I think the paint's wet. <laughs> so, um, um, so yeah. All right. So if you if you're in your shoulder stand sequence and you've come through uh, halasana, you're doing that. If you've got legs up the wall, just stay there. I'll tell you when it's time to come down. Don't worry. So from shoulder stand, if you're in halasana, you're staying there for eight breaths. just enjoying that feeling of the legs becoming light just allow yourself to be there don't worry I'll tell you when it's time from halasana you can come to karnapadasana squeezing knees against the ears three four five from karnapadasana support your back come back to your shoulder stand and then, if you wish, there, there is a little balance here. You can come to cross-legged. If you can get into lotus, go ahead. But if you're not sure, just come to cross-legged and see if you can balance on the shoulders here. If it doesn't feel good or you're worried about your neck, please just don't do it. Support your back. And we'll roll all the way down to the mat. So if you're currently in legs up the wall, you can come down and join us for Matsyasana, fish pose. <clears throat> so take your time to get there. We'll have our legs, I, I still want to notice that you can have um, them in cross-legged. So as if you were sitting cross-legged but you're laying down with the legs in that position. If they don't quite cross there, just keep them really loose. And if it really doesn't work for you, just extend the legs straight. That's absolutely fine. And you're going to press into the elbows, holding onto your haunches or your feet. If you've got cross legs, you can hold onto the inner legs, inner thighs. Press into the elbows, lift your chest, uh, chest sorry, and let the crown of the head come back. And my hair's in the way. And then you can hold onto the feet. So five breaths here. One, two, really important to keep lifting from the back of the heart. Three, draw the shoulders down the back. Four, five. From here, if you wish, you're going to extend your arms in front of you at 45 degrees. The head stays where it is, and the legs also extend at 45-ish. Uttana Padasana. You don't have to do this. If you're not sure, you're going to press into the elbows, lift chin to chest and lower. If you're staying here, we're just going to be two more breaths. And don't worry if you don't get it all today. I just want to show you so you get a feeling of what happens. You can watch it back and try again and I'll help you next week. Curl up, chin to chest, and roll all the way down. From here there's a backwards roll into a vinyasa. We're not going to do that. We're just going to give the knees a little hug. And then rock yourself up to sit. You're very welcome to take a vinyasa now. If you're tired, don't worry about it. Just come to downward facing dog and lengthen out and neutralize. So there is a vinyasa here. We're nearly there. You're doing so well. And then it's headstand. So if you're working on headstand and you've been doing it with me in class and you're confident to come to the wall and try, please do. If you know you can do it, just do it. Or we're going to take a dolphin prep. So you're going to bring the forearms onto the mat and just measure that shoulder distance. So hold onto your elbows with your hands and then bring the forearms back just to check you've really got that feeling. Whilst you're here, plug the armpits down. So really plug the armpits to your forearm there and then interlace the fingers and press the forearms down. So this is a really good way to build a bit of strength in your shoulders to feel that plug down. The head is going to stay off the ground here as we come up. 
Tuck your toes and lift your hips up as if you're coming to dog. Down dog. And then you can walk your feet in as much as they want. If they don't want to go very far, bend the knees and lift the hips up. Press down with the forearms, press the shoulders down. It will feel pretty tight and difficult. This used to make me feel sick, this posture. <laughs> and then have a rest and come to child's pose. Just stay in child's pose for a moment, let your breath regulate. So it's an excellent way to strengthen your shoulders and to find that stacking of the hips above the heart, above the head, which is really what we're doing in the inversion, where we're sending everything the other way, we're proving our venous return. So headstand is very heating, especially to start with, so we want to go easy. This dolphin prep we can repeat. If you don't want to repeat, just come to sitting in cross legs, so I know. Otherwise, we're going to try and repeat it. If you want, you can try putting the head down there and pressing up. This is a great place to try the prep. And you might find that your feet want to float off and you think, oh, okay, and then just try. But don't kick or swing. Instead, work on that pressing down, that grounding down through the... Um, the forearms and plugging the, the armpits towards the navel. Good, Katie, nice. Really squeeze it in line your legs, Katie, to send them up. Yes, keep squeezing in line the legs, great. Good, good, good. And you can absolutely find the wall and, and sneak the toes up, that's fine. Keep pressing down, lovely. And when you've had enough of dolphin or any prep you're doing, just come to child's pose again. Great, nice, good. And just let any head rushiness settle, let your breath come back to normal, and we'll just come to cross legs all together. Good. So just come to seated. Um, we'll just take a little check in with our breath together again. Just going to check the time for you. Um, yeah, it's half ten, so I'm conscious you're all working from home. We'll just do a little breath and then a shavasana, okay? So sit nice and tall. Shoulders down the back. And let's just take five simple breaths together, in and out through the nose, closing the eyes. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Inhaling, exhaling, last one, inhale, exhale, and then just come to laying down, I'm going to give you a proper couple of minutes in proper shavasana, so just laying down on your mat, arms and legs to the side, make sure you're warm, I'll hold the time for you. Um, so you can absolutely just relax. You can cover your eyes for a moment if you wish. It's only just after half ten, but you know if you need to go, I understand that's absolutely fine. But if you can, just ignore any distractions in the house. Just come to laying down, and I'll absolutely watch the time so you can just completely get the benefits of that proper rest at the end of your practice. So arms and legs falling away from the body. If it feels difficult to lay still, just bring one hand to heart, one hand to belly, and just feel your breath lightly moving.